Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, it's New Year's Eve, and as we prepare for 2022, I must confess that 2021 has been filled with, let's just say, many amazing stories. Over the past year, you know, we've watched the rights of every American being trampled on by progressive authoritarians who are trying to force us to embrace their brave new world. Uh, for example, you know, the First Amendment rights of many Americans, uh, they've been diminished by the vaccine mandates that the Biden administration keeps trying to impose and enforce. And just to be clear, listen, the First Amendment was written in order to protect the religious rights of every American, which includes the right to reject medical treatments which are in, are in conflict with our religious convictions. It's sad to say that there are many Christians who have now lost their livelihood to the vaccine mandate simply because they were denied a religious exemption. And not only have we witnessed the federal government stepping on our religious rights, uh, but we've also seen our freedom of speech being repeatedly stomped on by the big tech overlords who are quick to silence those who question the so-called science surrounding the rise of the COVID-19 virus. And those who challenge the mitigation measures that have been forced upon us, well, they're quickly deplatformed after being accused of medical misinformation. Uh, not only that, but we've also watched as the federal government labeled parents domestic terrorists simply for, you know, showing up to school board meetings and expressing their concerns about the anti-American rhetoric which is currently being taught in many classrooms across our country. Uh, rather than investigating the public school administrators and the teachers who are teaching our kids to hate America by embracing cultural Marxism, the feds instead decided to investigate the problematic parents who dared to show up and speak out. This is all despite the fact that the First Amendment gives us the right to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. We've also watched our Second Amendment rights being challenged by those who just really don't understand that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Uh, just for example, just consider the recent Kyle Rittenhouse case that led, uh, you know, uh, the, the world to, to watch, you know, as, as we considered, you know, how this case would turn out. And, and the lead prosecutor argued that Rittenhouse actually lost the right to self-defense by bringing an AR-15 to the protests there in Kenosha. As a matter of fact, the assistant DA, Thomas Binger, he turned to the jury and declared, and I quote, you lose the right to self-defense when you're the one who brought the gun. That's right. This assistant district attorney who works for the state of Wisconsin was leading the jury to believe that a person who is carrying a gun is no longer able to receive the right of self-defense. This is despite the fact that our Bill of Rights guarantees us with the right to keep and bear arms without infringement. Now, with that, you know, I just encourage every Texan to watch out because, listen, Robert O'Rourke, uh, who prefers to be called Beto, uh, he's already announced that he's going to be running for the office of governor. And we must remember that it was during the third Democratic presidential debate when this presidential candidate, Robert Beto O'Rourke, he assured his audience that he plans to infringe upon our Second Amendment rights. Here's how he put it back then, and I quote, Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. And then he added this, We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Wait, what? Uh, what about my fellow Americans who are breaking into our houses? Uh, what about our fellow Americans who are looting our businesses? Do we not have the Second Amendment right to defend ourselves? Well, now that Beto has announced his run for the governor's office here in Texas, every Texan should be very concerned about this progressive politician who clearly does not care about our Second Amendment rights here in our country. And what's even more alarming is that it was last April when the director of the CDC informed us that it's high time for this federal agency, you know, the CDC, to establish gun violence as an urgent public health crisis. Now, let's just take a moment to remember what happened when the federal government determined that COVID-19 was an urgent public health crisis. Within no time at all, executive orders overriding our rights were being signed left and, and, and left. 
<laughs> as authoritarians began to shut down locally owned stores and places of worship. And you better believe that progressive leaders like Beto will try to use similar tactics to rob us of our Second Amendment rights, you know, if, if they all have their way. And, and, and listen, this is just a scratch on the surface of all the ways that our unalienable rights have been diminished here in America uh, throughout the past year. And what's even worse is that the federal government has failed to secure our southern border, giving more rights to migrants who cross the border illegally. As a result, our border patrol agents have encountered at least 2 million migrants who crossed the border illegally uh, throughout the 2021. And listen, this is just the people they encountered. How many more came in undetected and unvaccinated? According to one estimate, upwards of 5 million migrants have crossed our southern border since January of 2021. And this, despite the fact that our government continues to require us to all uh, obey all of their pandemic policies. Not only that, but we truly live in a day and an age when good is called evil and evil is called good. And now we're expected to believe that men can just be women and women can just be men. And, and simultaneously, we're told that gender is just a social construct. Meanwhile, the same people would have us to believe that there may be anywhere from 12 to 112 genders. And those who disagree are just intolerant bigots. And listen, if a child is confused about their gender, well, uh, the parent is now being encouraged to provide their children with puberty blockers. And those who refuse are seen as abusive and intolerant parents. And all of this is taking place at a time when our country is experiencing a, a spike in violent crime as homicide rates go through the roof and most major cities and stores are being looted and places are being burnt to the ground. And, oh man, you, you might be thinking, oh, if we can just get to 2022, everything will be better. And it's sad to say that things probably won't be better. And so you might be thinking, well, where's the hope in this? <laughs> and if that's what you're wondering, I would remind you of something that the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 21. There he declares, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Christ Jesus was, of course, referring to the prophetic signs that help us to recognize what time it is on God's prophetic calendar. And according to the context you know, this list of signs that Jesus was referring to, it includes wars and commotions as nations experience turmoil. And this list also includes great earthquakes in various places, as well as famines and pestilences, which is the spread of fatal diseases throughout the world. Well, we're certainly seeing these things happen in, in, in greater intensity, at least. And, and Jesus also described this as a time when many will be easily offended. <laughs> We're most certainly seeing that happen. As a result, you know, people will begin to betray one another and they're going to hate one another. And, and according to Jesus, lawlessness will abound as the love of many grows cold. And, and according to Jesus, when we begin to see these things happening here in this world, and as we see them happening with greater frequency and intensity, this is the time for us to look up and lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing near. With that being the case, it's my prayer that every Christian will be filled with hope as we enter into this new year. And as we continue to watch this world being prepared for the rise of the Antichrist, and as we continue to watch lawlessness abounding as the love of many grows cold, we should be filled with hope. We should be filled with hope knowing that our redemption is drawing near. And so we must remember that those who set their minds above where Christ is seated, we will continue to have the hope and the spiritual strength that we need so that we can fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.